Hey guys, it's Brave Little Toaster coming to you from the Mile High City on January 19th, 2008. So, I started this video blog tonight with every intention of telling you guys what my top 10 best movies I've ever seen are. <clears throat> and that turned out to be too hard <laughs> because I really like movies. So I just made like a list of the best movies that I've ever seen and I divided them into subcategories. Now keep in mind, these aren't intended to be the my, you know, top movies ever made because I haven't seen every movie ever made. So I'm fully aware that there are some really amazing movies that are missing from this list. So if you guys think of a movie that I should really see that belongs on that list, leave it in the comments because I love movies. In the category of the best comedies, Juno, Napoleon Dynamite, The Breakfast Club, Don't you forget about me, Pretty Woman, Welcome to Hollywood, What's Your Dream, and Never Been Kissed, Best Horror. Psycho because that has got to be the best horror film ever made because it's all psychological It's all in your head. Alfred Hitchcock used to say that there was nothing more frightening than an unopened door 1408 and Silence of the Lambs was really good. The Sixth Sense was really good and The Shining Oh my gosh, if you guys have not seen Kubrick's The Shining Go rent it today. The HBO version does not count it sucks. You've got to see the Stanley Kubrick, Jack Nicholson version. Best action, frequency, Sin City with um, every person ever known in Hollywood. A lot of people were in that movie. Um, Star Wars, and when I say Star Wars, I am quite obviously referring to the old Star Wars, the 80s Star Wars, because the new Star Wars... I think George Lucas should deny that he had any part to do with them because they pretty much suck. Except for Natalie Portman. She's hot. Back to the Future, I really wanted to um, get in the teenage Michael J. Fox's pants whenever I watched that movie. The Wizard of Oz, which is kind of action, more like adventure, action-adventure type thing, and kind of a family film, but definitely one of the best movies ever made. Pirates of the Caribbean 1 through 3, that's right, I said it, all three of them were good. I really liked Pirates of the Caribbean 3 when I, thought, when I saw it, and I cannot believe that there are so many people that hated it. When I saw it, I felt like there was a hole in my soul where I was not a pirate king. Spider-Man 2. Roger Ebert himself said that Spider-Man 2 was the best superhero movie ever made, and I tend to agree with him. I think it's awesome that the bad guy in Spider-Man 2 wasn't like a normal bad guy where he's just all evil, and so you have no qualms about banishing him to the depths of, you know, the ocean or whatever. But Doc Ock had, like, a a soul that was good in him. Doc Ock was a good guy, so that internal conflict made it so interesting. And not to mention the special effects were beautiful, the acting was beautiful, Spider-Man 2 was just an all-around example of a good movie, and a standard that should be met or broken by all of the movies in Hollywood. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Best drama. Now this is a very wide category. I will say Titanic was a really great drama. A Few Good Men. You can't handle the truth! The Shawshank Redemption. Runaway Jury. Thelma and Louise with Susan Sarandon and Gina Davis. Wow, this is getting really long. Aaron Brockovich uh, with Julia Roberts. Mystic River. And a lot of people won't get this reference, but some, some people will. The Legend of Billie Jean is really good. And if anybody knows where I can find a DVD version of The Legend of Billie Jean is, I will, I will give you... Um, cool points, and I will send you cookies and flowers in the mail. Best existentialist films. Donnie Darko. The Matrix. Don't watch this if you're in the middle of an existential crisis, because it will put you in a state of depression for weeks, and you will not sleep, and you will wonder why you exist, and where your place is in the world, and why you should do anything, because nothing matters. Fight Club. I... I'm not a lesbian, but I, 
I will have to admit that Helena Bonham Carter is in my guilt-free three. I would do her because she's pretty hot, especially as Marla Singer um, with the whole, like, burning yourself with a cigarette and I am festering in my own diseased corruption, burn which burn. And in the last and most important category, I will talk about the films that I consider the best culturally relevant films that I have ever seen. Topping the list is, of course, Schindler's List. Second is American History X. Um, both of those deal with anti-Semitism and, at the same time, conquer issues of cultural diversity and racism and basically that whole runs that whole gamut of bigotry and discrimination and hatred and hate crimes and those are just really important films that we need our our kids to see and American History X is pretty graphic so I would probably like wait to show my kids until they were older but and I'm so same with Schindler's List but um, those should be re requirements in school curriculums I think uh, Million Dollar Baby which uh, maybe like the first hour and a half of the movie isn't culturally relevant, but the last half an hour does deal with assisted suicide, and that is an important issue. Hotel Rwanda. Want to talk about um, non-intervention? Let's talk about Rwanda. In about in 1993, I think it was, within a period of 100 days, a million Rwandans were savagely murdered. Hotel Rwanda is about that um, struggle. Crash, another Don Cheadle movie. Don Cheadle's from Denver. Crash was amazing. And last but not least, Forrest Gump. Anyway, so that was my really, really long list of amazing movies. Again, leave comments. Don't forget to be awesome.